everyone. My name is Michelle Mowdy, and I'm a developer advocate here at SAP. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about micro frontends, what they are, and how to implement them with Luigi. I'll go over what this architectural style is, the pros and cons of it, and how to implement it with Luigi. In order to talk about micro frontends, I think it's important to talk about how this came about. Back in the old days, and honestly still today, applications were just one big chunk of code. Everything the application needed was in the same code base, but over time, developers found ways to slice off bits and pieces of that monolith into smaller, more manageable chunks. And, and this came about by doing things like separating out the database or separating the front end and the back end. There's even microservices in the back end, which is quite similar to the micro front end architecture. And so the micro front end architecture is the same concept applied to the front end monolith. No longer is it necessary for an entire application's front end to be tightly coupled with itself in a giant code base. Now it can be split apart into smaller, more manageable pieces that are focused in what they're trying to do. And they're all connected together with a container or shell that handles the communication between all those pieces. Think about a very simple game. In this game, let's say there's a view where you can see yourself walking around in this world. There's another page where your items are housed, those things that you picked up along the way, and a crafting page to allow you to build bigger and better things with those items. And then there's an overarching HUD or heads up display over the entire thing. Each of these things could be a separate micro front end housed within a shell that displays that HUD and controls what view you see at what time, depending on what you want to see. But this comes with upsides and downsides. There's a clear division of the front end. You now have individual pieces that are incredibly focused in what they do. And that, that allows teams to own that one piece of the entire front end, instead of having multiple teams working in the same front end, which can lead to a lot of merge conflicts, confusion, and frustration between teams. It also allows for greater flexibility. If one team wants to work with React and another wants to work with Svelte, no longer do they have to get in a meeting room and have far too long of a discussion on which one's better for both use cases. Now they can each pick and choose what they want to use. But this does come with issues. It, it increases the complexity greatly. You now have to figure out how to handle the communication between these two, how you're going to deploy the entire service. Now, are you gonna do it in one piece? Or are you gonna do it in individual pieces? All that kind of stuff. And individual deployment of micro front ends does come with an increased cost because all of those things need to run independently. However, that independent running of these micro front ends has benefits. If there's a bug in one micro front end, it's far less likely to take down everything else and, and break your application because the bugs are now isolated in one piece of the code instead of if it was in a monolith application, that one bug could take everything down. This individual deployment of micro front ends can also mean individual deployment. You can update parts of your UI without having to update the entire UI. I remember back when I was, you know, an intern, we would have to make sure that all of our code was pushed by a certain date because everything in every part of the application was being updated at the same time. And then we were all on call the next day and, and right after it was pushed in case something went down. And that was kind of stressful. Now it's just one piece and there's a lot less that can go wrong when everything is so compartmentalized. But this can mean that communication between these can be difficult. Your teams are going to have to make sure that they're constantly updating and writing documentation and have clearly defined APIs. Because if not, it can make things very frustrating on the side of the developer. Whether to use micro front ends or not will depend entirely on what project that you're trying to create. If you've got a small project with just a few pages or simple features, this might be a bad choice given the higher complexity and higher cost. However, if you've got a very large project with many complex features and being worked on by multiple teams, micro front ends is definitely something to consider. And there are many different ways that you can implement micro front ends. So many different ways that I just chose to focus on one. One micro front end framework, Luigi. 
Luigi itself consists of two different pieces, the Luigi core, which is the container application. It houses and allows for configuration of navigation, general settings that are used across all the micro front ends, authorization, localization, and many more features. And there's the Luigi client, which is in the micro front ends and contains everything needed for those micro front ends to communicate with the core. And I'll be going over how to implement Luigi and show how to set up the Luigi core, how to connect it to different front ends using different frameworks like SAP UI5 and React. And I'll show how to use the Luigi client to allow a micro front end, a React micro front end in this case, to handle its own navigation and push that up to the core application. I'm going to be using sample projects from SAP UI5 and SAP Web Components for React, and I've done very little to these projects to set up for this presentation. I mostly only downloaded them, ran npm install, and started them. There's one where I did a little bit more just because it's a template and I wanted to actually show something on screen, and I did configure some ports to make sure that I didn't have two things running on the same port, but that was pretty much it, so let's get started. This is the Luigi app, just the core app, running independently. It's not connected to any micro front ends right now, and it's just quite literally the example app on my machine, npm installed and started. And you can find that example here in the Luigi repository. They have a bunch of different examples here of just different ways to implement Luigi. And I chose React because I'm a React developer and that's the language that I'm most familiar with. A lot of what you see here is actually handled through the core application. This header up here and the sidebar menu here, all of that's configured and set up with very little needed from the developer straight out of the box. And as someone who does a lot of front end, I really appreciate this. One of the banes of my existence is creating and recreating the same elements over and over and over again. However, if this is not your style, this is not what you're looking for, this is not what your project demands, you're not locked into this Fiori fundamental style. You can customize this and the documentation has info on how to do it and an example index.html page as a starting off point for you to look at. But since I wanted to go simple for the sake of the presentation, I just went with what came out of the box. Looking at the code itself, I want to go over the project structure and a few of the Luigi specific files in the Luigi core application. I won't be touching a lot of these files, but the sample project consists of a few parts. We have the source folder here that contains the sample code routing through sampleapp.html in the public folder. This is used as a way to simulate a micro front end to make it easy for this sample to be consumed by developers as a jumping off point. Because it's not really gonna affect any of the code I write today, I'm just gonna leave it as is. For an extremely simple bare bones Luigi setup, the two most important files are index and luigiconfig.js. And you can see an example of how this is implemented in the Luigi repo. However, as this is a React application, there's also this web config webpack config file that's used for bundling and creating static assets along with creating a development server so we can run this locally. Going into what webpack does and how to get it set up would be a presentation all on its own, but I wanted to point out that there's some configuration here for the setup of Luigi. So if you wanna use webpack to implement this on your own, you can kind of follow this, or if you wanna go with another bundler or server, for your React application, you might need to write some configuration there as well. Inside the index.html file is where the Luigi core is started, right here. And you can do this either by referencing a local internal file or by an, using an external link. I'll show using the external link in a later example so you get to see how to do it both ways. This is also where the initial configuration is imported, and that's really important for getting Luigi up and running. And that file is this one right here, which is just the Luigi core object and a set configuration function. Nothing else is in this file. 
And being sent into this set configuration is this object that contains two different pieces for this specific application. There's a lot of different things you can send in here for the configuration, like authorization, routing, and navigation, obviously, as you can see here. Um, before getting into navigation, I want to point out the settings. If you want to update the header or do a some things that require global settings like this responsive navigation which sets up the sidebar navigation and which button shows it which window size that kind of stuff there's also the header here which contains the title configuration and logo all that good stuff but up here this navigation this is the good stuff this is where we're going to be doing a lot of the coding today as you can see here it's this nodes and a list of different nodes we have one node here called home, uh, which is what I'm just going to call the parent node. And then we have children down here, which is a bunch of different things. What you're seeing here is a button that's shown on the header towards like the right area. And here is what you see in the sidebar. And to kind of get you familiar with how this is all working, I'm going to actually add another parent node to this list so you can see where these individual bits and pieces are showing up on the UI. And bear with me as I copy. I don't like typing during presentations because I can't type a talk at the same time. So I'll be doing some copy and pasting, but I'll be sure to describe the code as, as we go through. So what this is here is essentially home, but I named it home too. It's the same. I changed the icon to make it differentiate on the uh, header and it only has one child again. So you can see that it's changed some things on the front end. So if I save this and go back here to the sample and update, now you can see that there are two buttons here, one, which is just home. And you can see that in the URL and you can see all of these different children here. And then if I click home two, we only have one child, which is exactly what we expected. So hopefully that gives you a better idea of how the navigation nodes kind of work. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to connect an SAP application to the Luigi core application. And it's actually really pretty simple. So here is the SAP application already running. I grabbed this from the SAP UI5 documentation. They've got these demo apps here. It's the team calendar. And if you want to pull it yourself, it's the, you can download it through this button here. And it's pretty simple. It's a calendar from October, 2019, not exactly up to date, but we don't need it to be up to date. And it does work. You can do some things, all that good stuff. So to connect this to the core, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to set up the Luigi client in the UI5 application, and I'm going to add a new child to home, the first home, to show up in both the sidebar and to tell it which URL to look at for where the front end, the SAP UI5 front end is hosted. And that, just for reference, is going to be this URL up here. So going to the SAP UI5 code. The changes that we're going to make are pretty simple. We're just going to add a script and update one parameter here in this bootstrapping script. So let me copy the new script tag and these are going to be added into the head. So you can see here, this is using an external link to the Luigi client just to kind of show you how to reference Luigi through uh, internal reference like we saw in the core and the external URL here. And then the other thing is we need to update this frame options from trusted to allow. And I'm going to save that. And that's all we have to do in the SAP UI5 application. I literally just pulled this code, updated two lines in the index.html and it's all done. It's all set up. Of course, there's more that you can do with the Luigi client, but for just the sake of this presentation and just showing you how to connect them, that's all I got to do. So to connect this to the core, um, I am going to remove home two because we don't need that anymore. 
And right here in the children, I am going to add another one of these objects right below sample two. And I'm gonna copy and paste because I'm bad at talking and typing. Um, so here it is. This is just an object with a few different parameters on it. We've got path segment, which is what's gonna show up in the URL when you click on this sidebar icon or item. We've got the label and the icon. Those are what show up in that sidebar. And then we have the view URL, which is the path to the locally running instance of the SAP UI5 application. If I save that and we go back to the Luigi React site, forgot to click off of home too, that's fine. We can see that we've got SAP UI5 up and running. And if I click it, it'll load and there's the team calendar. I can even go back and forth just like we did on the other one right here. And that was honestly probably the simplest configuration that I've done in a very long time. And I gotta say, I love it when things are simple and easy. It makes my job much, much faster. So now that you know how to set up one with SAP UI 5, let's go get working on a React application. And I'll show you that right here. So this is a React template for the UI5 web components, as you see here. The code that I added, the most code that I added in all of the examples that I used today is this button text and this button here. All it does is increase this count. I just wanted to show a little something and show this kind of interaction because I think it would be pretty boring to load a blank page with just a header. Yeah, so if you want to use this, template as well. You can look at it in the UI5 Web Components for React application. They have this project templates and examples. And the one that I used was this one here, this Vite one. So the first step for connecting the React application to the core is to add a new child node. And this will look really similar to the SAP UI5 one that I used earlier. So it's just the same thing, different path segment, different label, different icon, and the path. If I save this, even though we haven't set up the Luigi client in the React application, it actually already still connects to it. And I can show you here. So we've already got it here. And if I click on it, you, you kind of saw that flash of the UI showing up, which means it's connected and it works. There's just one small problem here the Luigi core doesn't understand that the React application has already loaded, and that's because we haven't added the Luigi client to it yet. And there's two ways to fix this. One bad way that's just quick and dirty, and the actual right way, which is to add the Luigi core. So let me show you how to do it the wrong way, just in case you have a similar issue later down the line, and you need to know how to fix it. Because I ran into this issue, and I was like, why isn't this working? So all you need to do is add a new parameter into the child object. And it's this loading indicator. If you enable it as false, then the Luigi core doesn't try to load anything or doesn't try to see when things are finished loading. It just kind of shows the page and moves on. And if we refresh, it's there and it works and you can interact with it. But like I said before, it's not really the best way to fix this problem. So let's go into the React application itself and set this up the correct way. And I will remove this loading indicator so that we know when everything is working properly. So here is the basic React example. Like I said, it didn't really do much, but I did add this text and button. So we need to install the Luigi client into this repository. So I'm going to have to cancel out of the server and run this npm install script. And while that's running in this app.ts file, which is basically the entry point for the entire application, we're going to add in the Luigi client and we're going to reference it using a use effect. Now, if you've never heard of use effect before, they're essentially a hook, a React hook that runs code after your application has been initialized. You can also reference a variable with this and have it run anytime it senses a change on that variable. 
So here is the function and I'm going to import this into React here. Now we can see everything is referenced properly. So all this use effect does is it, it checks to see if the client is initialized through this function on the Luigi client and then sets a console log. Now, if you're using Luigi client in other ways in your application, you don't need to do this, but since this is such a simple configuration here, we kind of needed to reference the Luigi variable somewhere or Webpack will just pull it out and then the core doesn't understand that there's a Luigi client in here. So save that and rerun this. Going back to the application, you remember that I removed the loading indicator code. So what we see here is actually the correct configuration. No more bug, everything works. One, two, three, we did it. So the next thing to do is connect a far more complicated application and show a little bit about the how the routing and navigation work within Luigi core and the Luigi client. So we're gonna do that by using this to-do list here. If you look at this URL, I'll click on a to-do and you can notice that it updates and that's great, that's what we want. Click home, goes back. That's what we want. If you want to use this and play with this example, this is also in the UI5 React Web Components documentation. It's right here under the examples. This is the Vite example. So going back to the core, what we're gonna do is just add another reference here. And within the to-do application, what I've done is I have added in the Luigi client and the use effect, the same one that we used in the last application already, just so that this kind of works out of the box. And so going into the core, we're gonna add a new segment and this should be very familiar by now, just the same kind of formula, path segment, label, and a view URL. Save this, go back here, refresh, and it's working which is fantastic. So we can see this whole thing. Now, if you notice when I click on a item in the to-do list, the URL path won't actually update. And that's not really great. It's not what we want. It's already set up in this to-do application. So we kind of want to push that up into the core and tell it, hey, we're also going to want to update the path and routing. So let us do that, please. And the configuration there is pretty simple. So going to the to-do app, what we're going to do is we are going to add a listener on location to inform the core that the path has been updated by the micro front end. So I'm gonna go ahead and update this use effect function and I'll let you know what's going on here. So. This is another use effect, but this time it's listening on a variable, this location. So anytime this location variable changes, this code right here is going to re-execute. So location is being updated by the React router DOM package, and it's already been set up. So all we got to do is just make sure to listen when it changes. And to inform the Luigi core that this is happening, we're going to use the Luigi client link manager, and we're gonna do it from a virtual root tree. And a little bit later, you'll see me update the child in the node navigation list with a virtual tree equals true to allow this whole thing to work. And we're doing it without sync to let the core know not to update the URL itself to let us handle it. And then we're just going to navigate to the path of the location. So saving that and going to the core repo again, let's add the parameter that I mentioned before, the virtual tree, virtual tree equals true. We save it, go back to the application, 
refresh. And now when we click on a to-do, you can see the to-do is added on to the URL. And I know I was really benefiting here from the routing already being created in the to-do list, but that was pretty simple and easy. I liked how easy it was to communicate from the front end to the core that, hey, this front end needs to control the URL for a little while. So let it. And that's all the code that I had planned to show to y'all today. In summary, the micro front end architecture can be a really wonderful choice for large, complex front ends, and it can give teams and developers a greater sense of ownership over the bits and pieces of that front end. It's an architecture I've actually worked on myself before, and I've honestly greatly enjoyed it. There are many options to implement this architecture, and Luigi is definitely a great choice as it's easy to use and incredibly language and framework agnostic. I didn't even go into all of the different ways and all of the different frameworks you can use to implement Luigi. But I hope you got a lot out of this. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me or leave a comment below. I hope everyone is having a wonderful Devtoberfest. And with only one week left, good luck on that game board. And I hope everybody gets to Nerdvana. Happy coding, everyone. And I'll see you next time.